Okay class, today we're in section 3.5 extension. Solve linear equations by graphing. 3.5 extension. Solve linear equations by graphing. Goal. Use graph to solve linear equations. You have learned how to solve linear equations in one variable algebraically. You can also solve linear equations graphically. Key concept. Steps for solving linear equations graphically. Use the following steps to solve a linear equation in one variable graphically. Step 1. Write the equation in the form ax plus b is equal to 0. Step 2. Write the related function y is equal to ax plus b. Step 3. Graph the equation y is equal to ax plus b. The solution of ax plus b is equal to 0 is the x-intercept of the graph of y is equal to ax plus b. Example 1. Solve an equation graphically. Solve 5 over 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 3x graphically. Check your solution algebraically. Solution. Step 1. Write the equation in the form ax plus b is equal to 0. Write the equation in the form ax plus b is equal to 0. In other words, this is your a, this is your x, and this term right here is your b, but you got a 3x on that side. So that they want that side to be equal to 0. So you must get rid of that 3. And they're showing you that down here. So write the original equation. 5x, 5 divided by 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 3x. Subtract 3x from each side. Okay, after subtracting 3x from both sides, you end up with a negative 1 half x plus 2 is equal to 0. So just to subtract 3x from both sides, all they said was minus 3x here and a minus 3x there. And you end up with a negative 1 half x plus 2 is equal to 0. Step 2. Write the related function y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. So now you set this equal to y. So in other words, in place of that 0, you put the y. Step 3. Graph the equation y is equal to a negative 1 half x plus 2. The x-intercept is 4. Okay, now the way they found the y-intercept, I mean, excuse me, the x-intercept being 4, graphically was they graphed this equation using the y-intercept and the slope. Now, look at the slope carefully. It says a negative 1 over 2. So that negative is in the middle. It's in the middle because that negative can be written as a negative 1 over 2, with the 1 being negative, or as a positive 1 over negative 2, with the 2 being negative. Because you can count your slope in two directions. We'll show you in a couple of seconds. Here we go. Now, we got the y-intercept being 2. So, I locate that on my graph. 1, 2. Y-axis, y-intercept is 2. When, when, is, when does that occur? When x is 0. Now, let's count the slope using a negative 1 over 2. Now, why is that? Because I see that I got to go down in order to get to the x-axis. See that? So, if I went down, I would go negative 1. That's my rise. 1, 2. That's my run. Then I would go down. Negative 1. 1, 2, that's my run. And look where I'm at. My x-intercept is 4. And if I wanted to continue that, I would go down 1, and then over 1, 2. That's my other point right there. Okay? Now, sometimes you may need to go the other way. See right here where my, um, where the slope is 1 over negative 2, but they're the same thing? Just doing the same thing, going the other way, see? If we went this way, we would go up 1, that's a positive 1. Then we would go 1, 2, a negative 2. Up 1, positive 1. 1, 2, negative 2. So rise is positive, 1 is negative. Rise is positive, run is negative. Rise is positive, run is negative. But going this way, rise is negative and run is positive. Rise is negative and run is positive. Depending on your situations, you have to know how to use either one. So remember, slope, 
negative 1 over 2 means a negative 1 over 2 in this case or a 1 over negative 2. Okay, now some of you may be lost at this step going from here to here. That is, how did they come out with a negative 1 half x when they say subtract 3x from both sides? Right? Well, when you subtract 3x from both sides, you know that you're going to end up with a minus 3x on this side and a minus 3x on this side. Alright, now 3x minus 3x, we know that goes to 0. Alright, that's what we wanted there. Alright, now, now I got 5 over 2x minus 3. How can I do that? Well, what you do is you just make it common sense. 5 divided by 2 really means 2 and 1 half. That's really 2 and 1 half, or you can even say that that's 2.5. Alright, so now you're looking at a negative 3 plus 2.5 or negative 3 combined with 2 and 1 half. Well, you know one number is positive one and one number is negative, so you got to subtract. So what's 3 minus 2 and 1 half? 3 minus 2 and 1 half. You're left with a half. And since the negative is bigger than the positive, you end up with a negative half. So you get negative 1 half x plus 2 and that's equal to 0 alright everybody got that everybody got that alright so you have to recall how to work with your fractions or with um, over the decimal alright now had you use a decimal you would say what uh, 0.5 3 minus 2.5 is 0.5 alright pretend is money three dollars minus two dollars and fifty cents three dollars minus two dollars and fifty cents you left with just fifty cents or a half okay okay now that concludes our lesson for today um, example two uh, involves the same involves the same steps except they want us to use a graphing calculators and we don't have graphing calculators all right you can see how they're working with decimals but the steps are the same but since we don't have graphing calculators we're going to move on and the problems that we're going to be responsible for are problems one through six, all, one through six, all.